I'm checking and testing, checking, testing, checking, testing, checking, testing. Hi, this is Michelle with Life After Choice. We'll take it in small bites. In the last video, we talked about how some sort of blow to our self-worth early in life might have led many of us through a chain of events and a series of stepping stones that eventually led to our abortion. We sort of turned back the hands of time and looked at that issue of self-worth and asked, where does our self-worth come from? And we shifted our perspective to a God's eye point of view as we are made as the pinnacle of God's creation, made in His image, out of His great love for us, not because of anything we've done, but because of who He is. I wanted to return to this topic because I want to introduce a new character into the story of our abortions. Some of you may not have considered that this particular one is a player in the drama. And so I'm introducing him now. Uh, you may never have considered that he was a part of your story, but I'm asking you to consider it now because you ignore him at your peril. Whom am I speaking of? I'm speaking of one specific being whose sole purpose is to destroy you and me. This being hates God so much that because God loves us, he transfers his hatred to us and he seeks to destroy us so that he can spit in the eye of God. Jesus' message is one of abundant life, but this one's message is all about death. I refer to this one being as the enemy of God. But the Bible has many other different names for him. The accuser, the dragon, the tempter, the ruler of demons, the devil, the father of lies, the thief, the serpent, and interestingly, the ruler of this world. Yes, the enemy of God is the ruler of this world. Now proof of his rulership is not hard to find. All you have to do is look around and see all the evil that pervades this world. His message of death reverberates throughout the world. He seeks to steal, kill, and destroy us. Yes, he wants to destroy our relationships. Yes, he wants to keep us from ever discovering, for example, the sacredness of sex within the context of God-made marriage. He wants us to believe lies about our worth so that we never learn the enormous love that God has for us and that God can free us and forgive us. He wants us to turn into resentful, self-pitying, vengeful, addicted gluttons without hope, without God, without a future. He enslaves us, he lies to us, he torments us, he terrorizes us, and he leads us to his ultimate goal, the deepest degradation of humanity that the enemy can achieve, which is our eternal death. Then he has his greatest victory. We who have had abortions have unfortunately played right into his hands. The death of an innocent creation of God becomes his triumph over God. Or so he thinks. But is there really victory for the enemy? Let's look at the Garden of Eden. God in his mercy intervened on behalf of Adam and Eve in the garden after they were seduced by the enemy. And he provided them a means of escape. Yes, they were banished from the garden. They became subject to death. But God mercifully extended his grace and continued to honor the covenant that he made with humanity when he promised to bless them and multiply them. God cursed the deceiving serpent as well, and he made a promise. He made a promise right there in Genesis 3.15 that the seed, that is the progeny, someone coming from out of the, the, the loins of the woman, Eve, would bruise the head of the serpent, even while the serpent was to bruise the heel of that woman's seat. A blow to the heel causes pain and injury, but it is not fatal. A blow to the head is fatal. God shed the blood of a sacrificial animal to cover the failure of Adam and Eve, and he has done the same for you and me. The power of the shed blood of Jesus Christ is the greatest power in the universe and no power can overcome it, certainly not the enemy. The enemy is the loser. Here's what Revelation 20.10 says. 
and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Jesus has the victory. When we stand under his blood-stained banner in this battle for our eternal selves, we share in that victory. No weapon formed against us can prosper. And I know that there are some of you watching this today who have an awareness, even if it's not very clear, that there is a battle going on for your eternal self. Jesus says that the ruler of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. What do we do about this? Well, Jesus began his ministry with the words, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent in the Hebrew is the word shuv, which means to turn back or to return. The word in the Greek is metanoia, which means a change of mind or a change of purpose. So the repentant person is one who has a change of mind or purpose and turns back from something, turns to something else. Now Jesus just happens to tell us what he wants us to turn from and what he wants us to turn to. And this is going to be the key to our overcoming the enemy. Jesus says that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God. Why? That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified or made holy by faith in me. So when Jesus says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he wants us to step out from under the authority of the ruler of this world, the enemy of God, and step under the authority of the king whose kingdom is forever and ever. The Lord is king forever. Victory over the enemy is to be found through repentance and turning from the domain of darkness where the enemy has authority to the domain of light where God is king. Let's read from Psalm 107. There were those who dwelt in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in misery and chains. Now this picture is someone who's under the authority of the enemy of God. Because they had rebelled against the word of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High, which is exactly what the enemy did and he wants us to do that too. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their bands apart. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. Pray with me now. Lord, I repent of allowing the enemy of God to take a foothold in my life and in my spirit. I ask you, Lord, to smash the head of the enemy in my life. Cleanse me so I may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance, as you promised, among those who have been made holy by faith in you. I believe in you, Lord. Loose me from the bonds of the spirit of death and destruction. Your resurrection power of life overcomes death. Please come into my heart and make me over into a citizen of your kingdom of light and life. Fill me instead with your Holy Spirit. Enemy, you must flee in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We're already preparing the next episode. And please like and share and subscribe and tell your friends about our vlog ministry and all the other things that we've got going on at preparearoom.com so that we can grow and continue to help those hurt by abortion. See you next time.